We are inherently social animals. And as a result, sometimes we conform to the people around us just so we can fit in. Sometimes we conform to the people around us because we assume they know what the right thing is to do when we don't. In lecture series 21, we're going to talk about conformity and compliance. This segment will be on conforming to be right. The next segment will be on conforming to be liked. Then we'll talk about why it is we conform. We'll talk about conformity that leads to terrible consequences. It's a famous demonstration called the Stanford Prison Study that we'll review for that. And then finally, for anybody who is in sales or who has to deal with salespeople, we will discuss all the things that people do to get us to comply to a request. There was a key event that occurred in New York City that led to a lot of the research we're going to talk about in Lecture 21, and that is the murder of this woman, Kitty Genovese. Kitty was returning home from work late one night. She worked in a bar, so it was late. And just before she got to her apartment building, actually when she was in front of her apartment building, a man jumped her. He had a knife and um, he stabbed her. And there was an incredible fight that the two of them had for 30 minutes where the man was trying to kill her and she was fighting him off. And after 30 minutes, she was actually successful in fighting him off. She screamed, she cried for help, attempted murderer, uh, ran off, but he hung around to wait and see if anybody would come to help her. And eventually he realized no one was coming to help Kitty Genovese, even though she was right in front of an apartment building, her own apartment building. None of her neighbors came to help and none of them called 911. That was a really shocking event for everybody in New York City and in America. And it was this big question, how could an apartment building full of people watch someone be murdered and not even pick up the phone to call the police? Now, originally folks thought that 37 different people either saw or heard the murder it turned out to be a smaller number, somewhere around a dozen. But that still begs the question, if you were screaming for your life in front of your apartment building and 12 people in your apartment building saw it or heard it happen, wouldn't you expect somebody to call 911? Conformity occurs when we change our behaviors or change our beliefs to comply with some group norm. It doesn't have to be a stated group norm. It could be a rule, it could be some standard or expectation of behavior that a group has defined. Now that social pressure to conform doesn't have to be real. It can be imagined and we still conform. And there are generally two types of conformity. We conform in order to be right and we conform in order to be liked. And in this segment, we're gonna focus on the first one. We conform to be right in situations where we don't know the right answer. That is, in ambiguous situations when we don't know what the right thing is to do, what's your first reaction? Well, you look around and you see what other people are doing and you follow their lead, you conform. So if you've ever been in a fancy restaurant where they put out a lot of forks and knives and spoons and like me, you have no idea which spoon or fork you're supposed to use when, what do you do? You watch other people, you do what they do. You get a new job and you're not sure what you should wear to work, what do you do? Well, you look around at the other people at work and you copy them. That's conforming to be right. Imagine that you're in class and all of a sudden you hear dozens, if not hundreds of people running by the classroom. Well, you're wondering why are they doing that? Well, what's your first reaction? Like something must be wrong, I should run to. That is informational social conformity. In other words, conforming to be right, to figure out the right answer. And a classic study of conforming to be right was conducted by this man, Sharif. Dr. Sharif's study of social conformity involved a visual phenomenon called the autokinetic effect, 
Autokinetic means self-motion. Here's what happens. If you enter a room that's completely dark and there's just one point of light in that room, you can't really tell if the point is moving or stationary because there's no visible reference. You can't see the edges in the room or any other details. So the point's just sort of floating out there in space. And sometimes the point appears to move. Sometimes it moves just a little bit, maybe just an inch or two or three. Sometimes it moves quite a lot. Maybe it seems like it moves 10 inches or a foot. But the point never actually moves. But it's ambiguous because you're in a completely dark room and there's no reference. So what Sharif did is to test subjects individually in the autokinetic effect. So one by one, people would go into a room and stand there, he'd apply a little social pressure to make them think that the point was going to move. They'd stand there for a while, they'd look at the point, they'd exit the room, and in confidence they would tell him how far they thought the point moved. And when you run subjects in this experiment individually, each person separately, you find that their estimates of how far the point moved vary quite a bit. So you might have one subject that says it moved an inch and somebody else who says it moved six inches and another person who says it moved 10 inches. Now, what Sharif did next was brilliant. He brought back all of the subjects and ran them again in the study, but this time as a group, not individually, as a group. So this time you got to see what were other people saying about how far they saw the point of light move. What'd they do? At first, each subject gave a slightly different answer, but then as a study was done a couple of different times, you could see their answers converge to the same answer. So people who used to see the point as moving different distances now all report and believe that they see the point moving exactly the same distance, a couple of inches. So the situation is ambiguous, and when we don't know what to do, when we're in an ambiguous situation, we don't know what the right answer is, what do we do? We listen to other people. And a lot of times, what we believe is the right thing is what other people say, because we don't know, it's ambiguous. So when we conform to be right, we are actually changing what we believe, what we perceive and what we believe we have perceived. Again. When the right answer is not obvious, and in a lot of the questions that we deal with in the world, they're not obvious answers, right? Uh, how to stay safe during the COVID epidemic? Well, we know a few things, but the specifics, how long can you be in another room, or is six feet really enough, or it's a little ambiguous. So we look around for people near us or like us and see what they do, and we conform to what they're doing. Now, when we conform to be right, we privately accept what other people are doing is the right answer. In the next lecture segment, we're going to switch to a different kind of conformity, and that's when we conform to fit in or conform to be liked by other people. And in that case, we don't actually believe what we're saying we see or hear. Come back for that.